I'm Bob Lavaggi, and I'm going to discuss speed with you. In order to measure speed, you need a subject with a length and a clock to see how long the subject takes to pass the clock. In this case, two feet of styrofoam took one second to pass the clock. The styrofoam was going two feet per second. Okay, now I'm going to discuss the speed of electromagnetic signals. But before I do, I need to call my wife. Hi, hey Deborah. I'm going to be late for dinner tonight. I'm uh, about 44 light hours out from Earth. I probably won't make it home for about uh, a year. But uh, I need you to do me a favor. Send me. 43 hours of music. 43 hours exactly. Get her telephone call. It lasts 43 hours. Hey Deb, thanks for the music. I'm going to send it back to you now and I want you to time how long it takes for that music to play. She calls me back. Bob, it took 43 hours. Deborah, I'm going to have to move further away from Earth. I'm going to be moving away from Earth at 30 kilometers per second. And then I'm going to send you the same 43 hour signal. I want you to time exactly how long it takes for you to listen to that signal from the beginning to the end. I accelerate my spacecraft moving away from Earth so that it's separating at 30 kilometers a second. And of course, during the time of acceleration, the cesium in my clock lugs down because of acceleration. It makes the clock move slower. I get up to speed and I send Deborah the 43 hours of music. Deborah tells me that the signal that I sent her is 43 hours and 15 seconds, which is what I expected. She wants to know what I'm doing out here. Nothing, Deborah. I was just separating from Earth, that's all. But now, I'm going to reverse direction and I'm coming home. I'm going to crank myself up to 30 kilometers per second and then I'm going to send you the same 43 hour signal. I want you to let me know how long that signal lasts for. A few days later, she calls me back. Bob, this time the signal was 42 hours, 59 minutes, and 45 seconds. What are you doing out there? Deborah? I'm not doing anything out here except reverse direction and I'm coming home. Well, this is the situation now. I'm traveling towards Deborah and towards Earth at the speed of 30 kilometers a second. However, Deborah is between me and the sun, so I'm also traveling towards the sun at 30 kilometers a second, which is a little bit scary. You don't want to get too close to that. Regularly, I send her the 43-hour concert. Then she calls me. You say, I'm slowing down and the concert now is lasting 43 hours? Well, that's true. No, no, Deborah, I didn't slow down. I'm going the same speed. It's you. You've turned away from me. And now you're going the same speed away from me as I'm going towards you. It looks like I'm standing still. You want me to put on more speed? I can't, Deborah. I have to conserve that energy when I'm getting close to Earth and I have to re-enter the atmosphere to kind of steer and guide myself. Right now, 
I'm full tilt, 30 kilometers a second, and I'm traveling on my inertia. So don't worry, I'll be home. She called me six months later. Hi, Bob. Now the signal is 42 hours, 59 minutes, and 30 seconds. Do the arithmetic on that, you find out that it's because she's coming towards me at 30 kilometers a second, and I'm going towards her at 30 kilometers a second. We're converging at 60 kilometers per second. At this rate, I'll be home sooner than you think. Now listen, I'm planning to get close to Earth around the time when you start turning away from me again so that you and me are moving at the same speed. That's when I'm going to need my energy. Number one, I need that energy to make sure I don't fall on the sun. But secondly, I need that energy to kind of glide myself into Earth's atmosphere without going too steep or too shallow and kind of getting myself to slow down. And finally, when I'm in Earth's atmosphere, I'm going to start gliding and floating on the atmosphere and I'm going to make a soft landing. So I'll see you in about six months. Okay, what did we learn here? The same 43 hours of electromagnetic signal changes because of relative speed between the transmitter and the receiver. Now this contradicts special relativity, but that's my point. The electromagnetic signal stays constant with itself. The beginning and the end are always at rest relative to each other. The whole signal moves from my point of transmission to her point of reception. But, because I'm moving, it's added to the speed of that transmission. And it sends the whole transmission past her 15 seconds faster.